and welcome back to Just Wing It. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, boys and girls, and RC model aviation enthusiasts all across the globe. What do we have today? Today, we have the latest release from Hobby Zone and our friends at Horizon Hobbies. This is the Apprentice Stole S. So, uh, Hobby Zone focuses on your, your trainer aircraft, of course, E-Flight or more of your, your scale aircraft, like the uh, Air Tractor back there, Hangar 9, of course, your big uh, built-up balsas. But Hobby Zone has some really neat, fun-to-fly, easy-to-learn-on trainers. That's what they like to focus on. This is the Apprentice S, or Apprentice Stole S, the latest in the long line of Apprentice models. The Apprentice came out, uh, gosh, has it been about 10 years or so? It's been a while. It's a 1.5 meter aircraft that flew on, uh, or still does fly on three cells. It's probably four cell compatible by now. I'm not sure, that's just guessing. But in any event, they released the Apprentice S 2015-ish, uh, 2014. It was a 1300 millimeter plane, flew on three S. I think it was a 1300 battery. And I guess that's why they're calling this the Stoll S because there is already an Apprentice S. Uh, plus, they put these big bouncing Tundra tires up front, gave it a tail dragger uh, configuration instead of the uh, standard trike, if you will. Of course, some people may even consider this standard. Um, but in any event, the reason why I have the UMX Air Tractor out is because I want to show you the differences in size of the box. This one's about half the size of that one, but uh, this one's still came in as oversized for shipping. I <laughs> still had to pay oversized, whatever. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do what we normally do with our Just Wing and Unboxings. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna slowly work our way through. I'm gonna pull the uh, styrofoam out. We'll show you how she looks all packaged up. And then we'll break the pieces out one at a time. I'll show you how they look. And then we'll put it all together. We'll get it bound up to my uh, DX6 and we'll give her a functions check and we'll show you what that looks like. In any event, hey, go ahead and stay tuned for phase two, <laughs> you want to call it that. Hey, we're going to get the uh, the styrofoam container outside of this box here. We're going to show you what she looks like all packaged up. So stay tuned, coming right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, we are back with the Hobby Zone Apprentice Stole S. That's going to be we have to really practice saying that. In any event, hey, we got the model pulled out of the box. Here's what she looks like. Um, notice the, the tape, none of it's cut. So this is what she looks like, all packaged up. Looks uh, pretty good. Looks pretty good. So uh, looks like you got the wheels right, right. Got the plane, got the empennage all uh, already attached. The only uh, component that's not, that appears, is going to be the main wing. Um, and I guess they did that. Well, I'm not really sure why they did that. Probably, well, probably to make this box half the size of the uh, of the, year, the regular UMX boxes. Didn't help. <laughs> Still charge oversize. Oh well. Hey, good. Give them an E for effort. All right. But hey, there she is, all all packaged up. All right. Very very simple. The fuse, the main fuse, looks pretty good. We got the the the, the wheels down there. Um, and of course the main wing and uh, it's held on by two little bolts that go up there in the top So in any event as always your owner's manual all the paperwork's down there on the bottom So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get my little uh, box cutter going. We're going to get the tape uh, all off We're going to get all the pieces parts out of the box Get them laid out here on the zebra stripes the famous the world famous zebra stripes and we'll dig in All right. All right, so stay tuned more to come with the Apprentice Stole S. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, RC Malavation enthusiasts all across the globe. We are back in the next phase. We have the model out of its protective styrofoam. So there's one big piece, there's a big H-shaped piece that goes over. So hey, they, they tried to, to uh, be efficient with their, their use of the foam packing. So the model's out, and uh, it's a pretty nice wing, I'll tell you what. We got the wing, um, there's some plastic keepers, uh, appears that we have these standard U-shaped um, U-bends for uh, 
the adjustments, which I like actually. I like that little uh, little pra uh, plastic cover there. That's really sweet. Look at that. Wow. So uh, the servos look pretty nice. Um, they have them on the uh, inner, or sorry about that. Sorry about the focus. Looks like they have them somewhat in the middle of the uh, of the horn, the control horn. Uh, yeah, so there's the connecting wires. Uh, those connect uh, into the fuse. I, I, I brought them out because we're on video here. So these are the, the connections that go into the receiver. I think I really like that. Um, try and get some light in there. It's hard. But there's an Avian uh, ESC. So it has, it looks as though, it, it, it would look as though this plane has a, uh, let me get some light, oh, it's hard, anyway, anyway, it's a Avian, what is this, it's a 6 amp, <laughs> it's a 6 amp ESC, it's powering this, uh, this nice, super nice uh, motor right here, so what do we got, we got a, uh, we got a 1810, 2000 kV motor uh, yeah so this is super nice this is a super nice motor this is a really big prop I mean that's that's a big honking prop um, but it has this little avian six cell there uh, this has your your uh, standard JST connector or F PST or whatever they call it um, anyways it's a standard UMX connector okay <laughs> There you go. Standard UMX connector. Cavernous uh, bay. It's already got the uh, the hook and loop installed, and it's got the hook part, which I like. Um, and I, because I always keep the fuzzy or the loop on the battery, so perfect. Or uh, yeah, perfect. I got the loop. So this would be the hook part. I got the loop on the batteries. Super nice. I mean, super nice rugged um, motor mount. I mean, it's all EPO. They got brass. Look at that. They got brass fittings for the screws on a 700 millimeter plane. <laughs> so part of me was kind of like, you know, and it's all EPO. The whole thing is EPO from, from start to finish. So good job. Kudos to Horizon. Uh, they did a really good job on that. Let me get it there so we can see the apprentice stole. It's got safe on board. Um, so yeah, they did a really good job. It's got a nice uh, little tail wheel back there. Um, the mains come in this bag, and they're they're I don't know they seem pretty nice. They really do. There's your attachment screws uh, for the uh, wing. So I, I'm sure the wing would go on in a matter of just a couple of minutes. Not even that. Probably a minute. Hook up your your servo leads. Slide the uh, plastic uh, keepers into the front fuse, which by the way, in case you're wondering, there's a, a bit of a, a plastic lip underneath here that those keepers will line up on. I mean, this thing's first class. Uh, it really is. It is first class. I can't wait to get it together and bound up to my, my DX6. I'll tell you what, um, at first, and there's a little groove that goes in, and then there's magnets up front to hold this cowling on, right? So, I'll tell you, at first, I was a bit leery when I saw the price. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, but I bought the Bind and Fly. And of course, oh, I should, I should, I would be reticent if I did not show you the well-appointed owner's manual. I mean, look how thick that thing is. Of course, it's in multiple languages, but they don't leave a lot to chance. Very, very, very well-detailed. Typical Horizon Hobbies. I mean, if you've never touched a plane before, th this, I mean, they're there for you. I mean, look at this. It's amazing, okay? Um, in any event, uh, I bought the Bind and Fly, which I think was 159 or something like that. So, actually, for what I'm getting and what I'm seeing, now that I see it, I'm, I'm touching it, I, I, I'm feeling it, I'm picking it up. I mean, this thing is is pretty 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 squared away okay this thing is pretty straight it really is, is for for what you get for your bank for the buck so in any event hey 
Next phase, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing put together. I'm sure it'll take me all of a, a whopping two minutes or so. We're gonna get it bounded with my DX6 and we'll do a little walk around, uh, a little talk around, and we'll show you more about this uh, brand new trainer from our friends at the Hobby Zone. Uh, of, of, it's one of the, the arms, if you will, of Horizon Hobby and uh, the new Apprentice Stole S. More to come. Be right back. And welcome back to Just Wing It. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, boys and girls. We are in the final phase of the unboxing of the new Hobby Zone Apprentice Stole S 700 millimeter. Hey, this plane is sweet, actually. Uh, I'll tell you, I was a bit, uh, I don't know, taken aback when I first saw the price of the ready to fly versions, you know, well into the two, well, 229 or something like that. But, you know, for what you get with the plane, okay, I, I can kind of see it. I decided to go with the bind and fly, right? Because I've already got a DX6. But uh, let's, let's, uh, before I show you, well, no, I'll show you, all right? I've already got the cowling off. So this is a Dynagy's 2S pack. It's like a 365C, they say. I doubt it's 65C. But, uh, you know, all right. It's a 300, it's a 300 pack. She bound right up to it. Uh, well, <laughs> caveat. Uh, that's what I'm going to be flying it on. I'm also going to be experimenting with, uh, I do have a Babel Bat. So I'm sure Joel will be all happy. <laughs> Roger, anyway. <laughs> so it's a, what is this thing, Roger? It's a 330. It's a Hyperion. It's a 2S. I bought this from him about, oh, I don't know, a million years ago. But it's still like, it's still like, it's like a brick. I mean, it's so solid. There's no puffing at all. She be, she charged right up. I'm also going to try it on this old, also brick-like, by the way, old E-Flight 280, two-cell. That's a 30C. And I'll try her uh, on this uh, little Connexus. I like, the, you know, I like these batteries. Again, it's like a brick. And I've had these things for a very, very long time. For those of you who are long-time subscribers to the channel, you know I do a lot of flying. And, and for, the, for these things to be like, I mean, like bricks, come on. Uh, this will be the first time I've flown these, though. I've got about three of these Hyperions from, from Roger, from Babble Bats. Um, and I've got... Oh, I don't know about the same. I think I got about three, maybe four of these Dynagy's, uh, the 330's. So uh, we're gonna gonna go ahead and and we're gonna uh, try all those batteries out. I'll let you all know what I'm flying on. Uh, that way you know. Let's go over the plane first. Uh, these tires are just sweet. There's a slight. It's like a rubbery coating on some foam, maybe, but they're they're just sweet. Um, I really like them. Um, and like my brother Adam did, he, uh, I had to put, I had to put those little screws so they're facing, you know, aft, you know, lengthwise with the aircraft because uh, parallel with the, the shape of the fuselage because, because it's cool. So, <laughs> so uh, the wing was a little tight, a little snug getting into the saddle, the wing saddle. Those plastic keepers sure did go in a little snug, but they went in. I you know, just, just uh, made sure that the wing is pushed forward. Look at that. There's a plastic keeper right there on the fuse where those metal screws, and they have that little flange you can, you can screw down, and they go into brass fittings in the fuse. Class act. I mean, good job, right? For a 700 mil plane? Come on. Has these little stall you know, extensions on the wing, you know, on the on the outer part of the wing, which basically what that does is for folks who want to know, notice that they're aligned with the uh, with the ailerons, right? So what happens is this additional portion of the front wing creates a little bit more of uh, airflow right over the ailerons. You see that? So it creates airflow over the ailerons, therefore giving you increased aileron effectiveness at lower speeds. huh? Pretty cool. That's your aviation uh, lesson for the day. It's got a standard NACA. It looks like a standard NACA uh, airfoil, except it's more flat bottom than anything else. Um, might even have a slight curve to the to the rear part of the airfoil, but it's flat bottomed. Flat bottomed airfoils uh, are are actually high lift airfoils. That's what they're designed to do. 
So you'll notice that the, the airfoil, and by the way, look at that. The ailerons were lined up from the factory really, really good. Now look at that elevator. The elevator is more or less symmetrical, and it was lined up perfectly. I didn't have to do any adjustments on this thing. Rudder, nothing. So that, okay, we're, we're, we're working our way down the list. Uh, five stars so far. Five stars so far. It, it's horizons to lose. We're going to see how this thing flies, right? But right now, this thing's winning. Uh, the wheels. The wheels go in. There's a plastic keeper. Imagine that. You simply grab both of the wheels. You squeeze, you squeeze them together, basically. You squeeze the landing gear together, and it just snaps right in there, okay? Just work it in nice and easy. There's no reason to get uh, forceful with it or anything like that. Um, it goes right in. You know, she's a smart-looking little plane. I'm going to tell you, I prefer bush planes. I know my buddy Adam, uh, model aviator, is the same. We both love bush planes, and, and this thing's got a nice look to it. It really does. Um, I'm not going to lie. The manual uh, was, uh, as usual, I, I bound it to my DX6. There's the DX6. And just step by step by step by step, perfect. So, uh, you can fly it on all the newest uh, radios from, from Horizon, except I do want to say, uh, where did I see it? So, let me flip through the pages. Look at this. Look at this while I flip through the pages. Um, there's a little just swing it. There is a little just swing it. Um, but there is a caveat that uh, that uh, it's got to be uh, bind and fly with any of the uh, the basically um, compatible spectrum transmitters. Uh, there is even spectrum SLT. But if you try to bind it to an SLT other than spectrum, it's not going to provide full functionality. That is the that is the the caveat. So check that out. But hey, if you're binding it to a, a standard spectrum receiver. You're going to be good to go, unless you're like me, and I tried like three times, and I was like, why isn't this thing binding? Ah! And then I remembered that sometimes if you're too close, step back, like give the plane some space, personal space, right? And uh, I got back about, I finally had to get back like 15 feet away, practically in the next room, and it bound up. I was <laughs> like, okay, great. So anyway, hey, if it doesn't bind up right away, just make sure you step back a little ways from the, from the model. And by the way, there's a kill switch that uh, is part of your binding process that it wants you to put it on, like, switch K or something like that, I think. Uh, let me look here. Uh, H, hotel. It wants you to put the bind on the uh, hotel switch. In any event, hey, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something I just found out, which is really kind of interesting. So uh, we've got left, right. Okay, up, down. Okay, look at that, nice and smooth, and then left, right. Okay. By the way, I have it in the non-safe. The safe binds to your your A. The A switch is safe. The I is your bind switch, but when you're flying it, it's also the panic button. That's my panic button. Oh no! Right, right, panic. I'll show that to you when I fly it. Well, well. <laughs> I hope I don't show you panic, but I'll show you how that switch works. This is going to be safe on. Go to zero, safe off. Now, or oh, correction, correction. I had it exactly bass backwards. That's safe on, that's safe off. Safe off, safe on. Now, I want to show you something interesting that I, I, I saw. When you activate the ailerons, watch. When you go aileron, as, as my buddy Robert says out there in Slovenia, watch the rudder. Look at that. Look at that. It's already, okay, in safe, it's already got rudder uh, uh, rudder mixing. Look at that. You see that? I didn't know that. So I, I was like looking at it like, whoa, that's pretty darn cool. So in, in safe, you have a little bit of rudder mixing. Pretty cool. Flip the uh, safe off. No more, no more rudder mixing. Okay. Elevator, I got full... I got full uh, motion on the elevator. I go to I go to safe on. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's full. That's full. <laughs> that's all you got. So anyway, um, yeah. So it's a really nifty little airplane. I am digging it. Uh, I can't wait to get this thing out. Show you how she flies. So uh, with that said, hey, thanks for watching the unboxing. Uh, and, and the step-by uh, assembly, if you will, of the, the Hobby Zone Horizon Hobbies Apprentice Stole S. 
uh, 700 millimeter. I'm digging it. It's all EPO. It's 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 a nice plane. I'll tell you the the uh, the rudder uh, was a little uh, kind of I don't say warped. It there it it wasn't fully um, uh, I don't know ha ha perpendicular or not perpendicular. But what I'm trying to say is the rudder was a slightly out of uh, of alignment with the actual horizontal. Um, so I just simply gently kind of bent it uh, in such a way where where uh, it, it was uh, aligned okay as you can see now it's still slightly you know warped bent whatever you want to call it to the right as we're looking at it from behind but that's okay I, I don't that I, I do not see how that's going to affect the flight plus I'm going to work on it just gently kind of nudging coaxing that EPO foam over there to the left, you can clearly see that, right? Nothing wrong with that necessarily. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm really not going to worry about it. I think it's just aesthetic, right? I don't, I don't see how that's going to be practically affect the, the way that the model flies. But I'll make sure it's, you know, uncatawampus before I fly it. But anyways, hey, thank you for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate you stopping by Just Wing It. Uh, much more to come. We're going to have... Uh, some flights on this plane at my little grass field park, which is nearby. And then we're going to take her out to area 51.5, as my buddy Dave out in, in, in Texas calls it. We're going to go out to area 51.5 Newberry Springs and get you some bush flying too. So, again, uh, thanks for joining us today. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up. They do help out with the algorithm, and I greatly appreciate it. And besides, it's free. So go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you feel like it. I would appreciate the subscriptions as well. And we're going to have more videos of this plane on the channel flying both in the dirt out at Area 51.5 and at my little grassy field nearby the, the homestead here. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hey, I'm so, so far, two thumbs up. We'll see how she flies. Cheers, everybody.